Hi, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, Social Media Ads Go Shopping, Measuring Ad Success by Ecom Performance. I'm Quirks Editor Joe Ridholm, and before we get started, just wanted to go over some of the ways you can participate in today's event. You can use the chat tab to interact with other attendees, and if you'd like to ask questions of the presenter, you can use the Q&A tab to submit questions during the session, and our speaker will answer them after the presentation. And then any questions that we don't get to can be answered offline. Our session today is presented by iSquare. Enjoy the webinar. Okay, thank you for attending our presentation today. We're really excited. The topic is social media ads go shopping, measuring ad success by the, their e-commerce performance. Uh, we're gonna have a Q&A at the end. As I said, we're really excited to present what we believe is really a breakthrough in measuring the success of social media ads. We created a really powerful combination using our System Zero in-context technology with social media and e-commerce to create this new product. Uh, basically, we test your ads in a natural environment and deliver over 25 behavioral metrics. And we measure how well those ads drove attention, how well they drove interest, and how drove they both purchase through the whole sales funnel at the e-commerce point of sale. And we do this all while the consumer is not even aware what's being tested both on social media and on e-commerce. And our hope is at the end of this presentation, you're gonna see the value of our live in context system zero technology and really see why measuring the consumer's behavior of the shoppers going coming from the social media to the e-commerce point of sale is really a powerful and accurate currency to predict ad performance. And we hope that you'll see the value in really seeing what your customers see, seeing what they think and feel, and especially seeing what they do. And by doing that, by seeing what makes the difference so that you can win in a really competitive marketplace that's ever changing both on social media and on e-commerce. We're gonna be focusing on what we call human experience research, see the experience. And by creating the most natural experience for consumers, both on social media and on e-com, we're really able to learn, does my social media drive attention? Does it drive interest? And does it drive increased sales in a very measurable way? Uh, my name is Jeff Vander. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at iSquare. I'm in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, and our agenda, keep it short, I'm going to go over uh, um, iSquare, explain a little bit about our company, give you the evolution of this product, uh, social media ads going into, sh uh, going to shopping and how it works, what you're going to learn, why it matters, and then we'll go to Q&A. Uh, overview of iSquare. iSquare was founded in 1999 in Berlin, Germany, where our global headquarters are located. Uh, we have offices in London, Hong Kong, Tokyo. We opened up the India office in 2020, and the New York office uh, I launched in September of 2017. Uh, we have really three areas of expertise, user experience, brand and media experience, and shopper experience. And we have one of the most extensive global benchmarks for implicit data. We've been doing it this our 23rd year. We are very big in innovation, technology innovation. Uh, we have groundbreaking software, have US patent. Uh, we work in over 60 countries and that's growing. And our technology, which we're gonna go over today for this product, uh, we have, I mentioned we have US patent. Uh, it's licensed by eight of the top 10 uh, companies listed in the GRIT in, uh, innovative uh, companies. Uh, we're really excited about that. So we talk about real human experience, uh, innovative and implicit research. Over half of our company has advanced degrees in psychology, and this enables us to really deliver valuable psychological insights that our clients tell us is very rare in our industry. Um, our technology innovation is also extremely uh, unique. We're constantly creating new products. Uh, we have a, a large number of the people in our company that have been with us over 10 years, a tremendous culture. And our innovation, as I mentioned, we're coming up with new products all the time with our tremendous technology. Now, when we talk about um, our re research touch points, I mentioned three different areas of expertise, user experience, brand media experience, and shopper experience. When we look at behavior, consumer behavior, we look at three different angle system, system zero, system one, and system two, which I'm going to talk about briefly. And all of the work that we do 
we use all three forms, all three systems. We work, as I mentioned, in over 60 countries. And uh, you'll see a lot of global countries here. Uh, the technology enables us, both of the things we're going to share today with social media, e-commerce, and social ads going shopping. Because we can do it uh, online, we can test really anywhere in the world that has internet. I want to spend a few minutes on uh, system zero. But when we say system zero, what we're talking about is perception. Uh, perception is the start of every successful contact. Uh, system zero really is the foundation to have success with system one and system two research. Uh, we, it's really a market research innovation where ads are tested in their natural environment and the implicit consumer response and explicit behaviors are recorded. And because they're tested in natural environment, the results are far more predictive and reliable than other approaches. And really to get objective and valid uh, insight data, you have to use all three systems. Um, the older way of just using two system theories are really not sufficient anymore to really explain deep down behavior, preferences, and perception. Uh, our CEO actually coined the phrase system zero. And just as a footnote, uh, he was at Yale in the late 1990s when implicit research testing was first being used for market research. And when our company was started in 1999, we focused on implicit and explicit. And really, System Zero is kind of an innovative foundational next step uh, to really understand and predict consumers' behavior at every stage. So we're going to talk, the topic is social media ads go shopping. How did this begin? Where did this product come from? So what I'm going to do first is go through social media, then e-commerce, and show how we put it all together. We began with live in-context testing on social media, mainly because that's where the eyeballs were. And that's where, if you look at uh, 2021 in the U.S., 64% of every ad dollar was spent on either Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Amazon. Amazon uh, was later in the game. But as you can see, you look at 2019 to 21, had a, over a 50% increase in their ad, the market. Uh, Facebook has kept kind of the, the same percentage, and a lot of that's due to Instagram. And uh, I say Facebook, it's meta today. And if you look at uh, Google, YouTube, because of the expansion of the number of options available, they've had about a 10% decrease over the last two years. And as you can see, the trend expectation is also in that direction, whereas you can see Amazon uh, is going in the opposite direction. So as I said, uh, this really started 13 years ago when eBay came to us and said, we want to test in a natural environment. Uh, we have a lot of partners that we work with on a regular basis, and we couldn't find one that had this natural environment, so we created it. And if you look at all the social media sites, you know, with the, uh, TikTok and Instagram, Twitter, Snap, all of them, they account for over 70% of all the ad dollars in the US. As I said, this is where people spend their time and this market's ever changing. The social media um, arena is, if you think about it, three, four years ago, how many people even knew what TikTok was? Now it is the fastest growing social media site. They're co constantly uh, pivoting and adding new um, ad, ad formats, testing new formats, and there are also always new platforms. So let's just walk through how the social media part of this works. This is how we started. And then we'll get to e-commerce after that. And then I'll show you the combination, which is this really ability to create a new currency and measuring ad success. On social media, uh, the respondents, we work with panel companies all over the world. Um, we're not a panel company. And so the respondents will get their link, whether on their cell phone, could be on their tablet, could be a desktop. And they'll have some qualifying questions. And then they'll go to, you can see this, it's Facebook. You'll now be taken to Facebook. Please look at the page as you would naturally. After 90 seconds, the server will automatically continue. There's no application download necessary. They don't have to log in. They'll be taken to, in this case, Facebook. It could be uh, YouTube, TikTok, any of them. And they're, they're going to browse for a certain amount of time. And this particular example was 90 seconds. It could be anything. It could be five minutes, two minutes, uh, 30 seconds. really depends on how long the ad that you're testing is. You want to give them time to look at it. They browse, we pull off the API, all the content. This is live content. Uh, you can actually pick by topic if you want. 
And so they browse, they browse around. There's no app to download, as I mentioned, no login. And as they browse, they don't know what's being tested. This is really a beautiful part of this system zero, the perception where they're just browsing and it could be anything on there that's being tested. So they browse and after the time period, they'll be sent to a survey. But while they're browsing, we're gonna measure all the behavior. On Facebook, did they turn on the sound? Did they click on it? Did they make it big? Uh, how much time, if it's a video ad, say uh, um, on YouTube, did they skip it? Did they mute it? Uh, did they make it full screen? How many people saw 10% of the ad, 25, 50, 75, 100% of the ad? Any poten potential behavior is measured. And then we go to the survey and ask questions. So why live in context? Well, what we're doing, we're collecting the behavioral data on everything, everything that they do in an environment where the consumers don't know what's being tested. And that's really is the beauty of this. Um, we measure, get, as I said, over 25 behavioral metrics in this natural environment where it takes place. Uh, you can test on pretty much any social media platform and any ad in those platforms. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility to what you want to test. Uh, be creative. Uh, you, as I mentioned, you can test a mobile desktop uh, on also on um, the iPad. Uh, the data is safe. This is really important. You can we have people that test uh, animatics, test storyboards, because you can see on some of these platforms there's some very interesting things that look like animatics and storyboards. And the nice part is you're in this test environment where you're not trying it live, where competitors can't find out what you're doing. Uh, most of the studies you get your results in one day. We also have a self-serve platform where you can actually create everything yourself and get your results immediately. So let's just briefly talk what makes social media ads great. Um, how do you measure social media ads? I actually Googled that. I, I, go, I Googled what makes social media ads great. And Google came back with 4.6 billion responses in 0.68 seconds. Uh, I just looked at the ones that were paid for. And I'm not going to name any names. You can all Google it yourself. But one that I found near the top was very interesting. Quote, it says, the six qualities of not just good, but thumb-stopping good social media ad are clearly defined goal, small target audience, high quality. I find that interesting. Relevant and eye-catching image or video. No mention of results. And a lot of it has to do with not simple to get results. So we thought, how great would it be able to measure quantifiably which platform or which ad delivers more attention measurably, more interest and interaction measurably, and actually helps put more of the product in the cart on e-commerce, all in a natural environment where consumers don't know it's being tested on social media or on e-commerce. We thought that was pretty exciting. And as we know, e-commerce has been growing uh, significantly and over the last two years, it's exploded. Uh, so we realized we can use the same technology on e-commerce. So we're going to talk about that briefly, and then we'll combine it. Um, we have complete control over the environment. Similar to the social media, we pull off the API, the content, and then we inject the package. We can inject and, and the, the price, we can uh, the uh, images in the carousel, the video. Uh, we're going to do, keep it simple for a simple A-B test. We can measure how much time was spent in the search result. Did they click on it and did they put it in the cart? Um, you can experiment before you roll out live. One of the drawbacks of being live on Amazon is you can actually negative impact your product sales. Because if that variant performs worse than your original listing, you could lose potential sales and also customers. And when you test in our e-com platform, you avoid these, these challenges. Uh, you can choose what audience with any panel company and the results are also fast, quick turnaround time, testing anywhere in the world. Just to give you what that looks like, again, the respondents through the panel will get their link, click on on their phone, tablet, or desktop, and they're launched from a survey to instruction page. This Now you'll be taken to amazon.com UK, and please, in the search box, type in the category. And when you find, uh, you can, they type in the category, you can tell them to shop. Put something in the cart, take your time. And they complete a shopping task. Then they're redirected, in this case, to Amazon. We work with a lot of different e-commerce sites. We'll get to that later, but we'll just use Amazon since they're the biggest. And then you have this natural environment. 
where all those, uh, the content is pulled off the API, just like if they searched. The only difference is that we're going to inject that test package. Uh, simple, we see a lot of A-B testing of a current package versus a new package. And we want to measure, when you go to the search results page, we're going to be able to test how long was that image in screen. That's attention. Did they click on it and go to the product detail page? That's interest. Did they put it in the cart? That's purchase. And all the time, they have no idea what's being tested. So they're going to go from search results to product detail page to the cart. And then after that, once they put something in the cart, they'll go to a survey. And let's just take a quick look on what that looks like. Qualif qualifying questions, search for headphones uh, and put something in the cart. And when you're done, it'll go to, we'll take you to the survey. I'm going to mute this because it's kind of loud. We can set this up in a lot of different ways where if, let's say, they misspell or type in the wrong thing, we can have them go to what you want them to go to. Uh, we also have people that actually test uh, what they're doing a new product, to actually test what they put in the search. So as you can see, uh, they can. This is, the, this is pulled off the API, all natural content. We usually put the product in the third or fourth position, and we have them shop and make a purchase. Again, they don't know what's being tested. And so once they make the purchase, they can go to the carousel, as you can see on any product, watch the video, and we're measuring everything that they're doing with the test product. And then they go to the survey. And I put in here add and pack on e-commerce because Amazon ad platform is growing faster than most of the other ones. So we're measuring behavior, how much time was spent on the ad or the package. Did they click on the ad or the package and go to the search results page? And did they put it in a cart? And then we follow up with survey ratings, what they articulate on awareness, image, impact, and ad evaluation. So we can test everything. Uh, again, we're talking about e-commerce now, not the, the total combination. So when we talk about new products on the search result page, we can measure the product image. We can change the title, the price, the descriptors, primary images, uh, any kind of ad format that uh, Amazon or the other sites have, uh, the, all the supplementary images in the carousel, the video, uh, any marketing copy, any of the benefits. And Amazon has a lot of A-plus enhanced content on the price, uh, product detail page. We can test that before you spend money on it and see how well it works, how engaging, how much attention, interest, and interaction that they, they have with these ads. So the questions we answer, this is again, all e-commerce, do the new products perform in a competitive environment? We can actually control who's next to you, if you like. Which pack or image triggers shoppers to interact? Clicking on it, going to the product detail page. What impact do pricing and promotions have on conversion? What's the optimal set of product images in the gallery? We have people testing three images, five, seven, 10, What's the, um, is it worth investing in the A plus paid content? And when all said and done, what's the ROI of the ads that we're paying for on social media and which product is driving more people to the cart, which we look at the funnel, the e-com conversion funnel. Typically all these things are asked in a survey. And this was a simple test. Current, pa current package versus a new package. One cell will go through the whole process with the current package and we'll measure viewability. How long was that uh, package in screen? And did they click on it, go to product detail page? And then they put it in the cart. And the second cell will go through the same shopping task. The only difference is they'll see the new package. And this was a very clear winner. The new package had significantly more people click on it and almost double put it in the cart. So this was an easy decision for them to make on going with the new package. So we went through social media, we, uh, we went through e-commerce using our live ad injection technology. And we had an hypothesis that we really think we can change the paradigm, the older paradigm of what success is on social media ads and how to measure it. So instead of what consumers say or what consumers say they're gonna do, we're measuring their behavior in this natural environment where the consumers don't even know it's being tested. And when you're measuring behavior on this e-commerce journey through the point of sale, we're taking away the guesswork. So now you know which ads 
or which platforms or both are going to drive attention, which is critical to at the beginning of everything. You got to get attention. And then if you get attention, we can measure interest. Do they interact with it? And most importantly, did they put it in the cart? And we can measure all this now. So we were really excited to launch this product. And uh, I have to say it's been humbling and we've been very grateful of the acceptance and the excitement in the marketplace of this product. So let's just see what it looks like. You'll have the screen of questions. And then they'll get exposed to the ad on social media. Again, we're just using Facebook as an example. Again, they don't know what's being tested. They're just going to browse. You see the Food Network. And you'll see where we put iSquare here so you can see where we injected it. And they can click on it. They can listen to it. And they can scroll. I just stopped here just so you could see where we inject it. And then when they're done, now this is a headphone ad. Again, they don't know what's being tested. They could have scrolled by it and looked at it for a half a second. Everyone's different. Now, we're going to take an Amazon and type in headphones. So what we've done, we've combined the experience on social media to the experience on e-commerce to create this currency to understand the real value of that ad on how well it drives attention, interest, and, and sales. So they type in headphones, just like we saw before. They scroll. I put the ad in there, too, where it says I-square because that's where one of the ads are. And we're measuring, again, all behavior. And then it will go to the survey. We'll skip a lit. Okay. Social, ad me social media ads go shopping on e-commerce. So going from the ad on social media to the cart is used in a lot of different ways. In fact, uh, in December, Quirks, we had a live, live event, which was exciting in New York. And uh, I presented uh, with Colgate, uh, Helen Wolf. We presented this social media go shopping from ad to the cart uh, on multiple social media sites with multiple ads going to Amazon. So we're able to, uh, different ways are being tested, measuring the attention how much time was viewed in search results page, how much interest they click and go to the product detail page and how sales putting in the cart. Also, they're testing which platform because some ads work better. In this case, it was Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram and understanding certain ads work better on certain platforms. So you can test ads on multiple platforms to understand where you should put them. And then always the big, the big win here is understanding the ROI what ad is driving more people to put it in the cart. And again, these behavioral metrics were typically, uh, they're asked in surveys. They have been for decades. You know, which were you aware of? Which would you consider? Which would you purchase? So now instead of asking it, we are measuring it with what they do in an environment where it's natural and they don't want to be tested. So we really believe what we're seeing that this is a new way to measure the value of these social media ads. It's really a way to measure effective, effective currency of the ad. And typically, as I said, these questions are typically in every survey, but now we're measuring not just they say, but what they actually do. And typically when they're doing a control, uh, you'll have a cell where they'll go through this whole process, social media to e-com with no ad in social media. So you, one cell will go through no ad, go shopping for the same category. The second will be exposed to the ad, go shopping. And we see, did that ad, what kind of lift did it bring to viewability? What ad, kind of lift did it bring to interest and interaction? And what kind of lift did it bring to purchase? And we'll show an example in a minute in, in deliverables to understand really uh, how to understand which ad really is the best. So we're going to go to deliverables now. And this is a high-end view, uh, the new currency. We're measuring what respondents actually do and not just what they say or say they'll do. So when they're making a purchase in as close to real as environment as possible, uh, it's a really good indicator of what's going to happen in the marketplace. But there are a lot of people who want to know not just the purchase, but the whole funnel. Where, what, what, what product is getting the attention? What ad is driving attention? What ad is, getting, is driving people to click on it and go to search results page? Now, we're going to take a second here and just look over. Again, this is a high level view of testing four ads and a control. The control had no ad on social media. And so we're measuring 
the, the shopping task KPIs of time the ad was in view? Did they click on it? And was the product purchased? And as you can see, the third ad was significantly better than all the other ads. And obviously the control to almost more than double on most of them as far as uh, share of purchase, putting in the cart and then clicking on it, clicking on the ad. Uh, sometimes in test two is five times better in almost double in all the others. And also in the questions, our survey, we follow up with a survey where you were testing, the, asking questions on the image, impact, awareness, and the asset evaluation. So this was an easy decision to understand test three is going to drive more attention, interest, and purchase. So the KPIs of combining this is very, very exciting. As I mentioned, we're measuring share of purchase, which is in most cases is the main thing people are interested in. Time to purchase. We have a lot of people interested in how long does it take them to buy. Uh, the product tile in the search results page, how long did they view it? Product detail page, how long did they view it? And did they click on the search results page to get there? And then we, all, people, we have a lot of people who are interested in content below the fold. Did they spend any time there? And are they interacting with any of it? And then we ask our questions about ease of purchase, recognition, image evaluation, enhanced content evaluation, socio-demographics. The behavioral data, when it's similar to this, it's really easy to make a decision. If they were close, then we're going to get into the survey to tweak out which one is the right one to go with, which ad. So as I mentioned, we work in a lot of different e-commerce platforms globally. These are just a few. And to get it for the visual people on the map, uh, you can see in different parts of the world which ones we test on. This is always growing as our clients request for new e-com platforms. And here's a list. And as I mentioned, additional retailers are always possible upon request. You can see in APAC, the different uh, e-com sites that we work on, South Korea, Thailand, China, Taiwan, Vietnam, and then worldwide. Uh, then you have in Europe, uh, Tesco, Amazon, Amazon Fresh is always growing all over the world. And you'll see which ones are mobile and desktop are just mobile. And I mentioned US, we have Walmart, Target, Kroger, and Best Buy. And then in Germany, where our headquarters are. As I mentioned, these can always be added to. Now, what we found, some of our clients said, well, you know, this is great, but what about insurance companies and financial companies who uh, don't sell on e-commerce sites? So we created, instead of add to e-commerce, add to Google search for insurance, financial companies, anyone who's not selling on e-commerce sites. And the beauty of this is the Google search page, we pull in the organic research when they type in whatever to search for. In this case, we ask them to uh, go to Facebook, look as you normally would. This is the same process. They don't know what's being tested. And we can test a few different things. We can test, pull in the content. We inject the ad, just like we showed you in the social media and in the uh, social media to the e-com. And then we'll tell, tell them to uh, go to Google. And in this case, say you're looking for car insurance. We can actually measure what they put in the search bar and then whatever they put in the search bar, we can pull the organic content of car insurance and inject the Geico. This was a Geico ad. So we really, uh, this is a beautiful way to understand we're measuring attention and interest here, not purchase. How much time do they spend? You'll see shortly the, the organic search and you'll see the different companies and where we put in Shortly, you'll see Geico right here. How much time was Geico in screen and did they click on it? We also had a lot of companies that say, well, what if we don't want to do it on social media and we want to do it on other sites? So right now we have built in 10 different regions, over 60 sites we've already built where you can test on. And again, this is also uh, growing where, you know, for example, ESPN, we can have them exposed to ESPN, the ad, take them to e-commerce, same same uh, to understand multiple ads, which one is performing best, which one is driving attention, interest, and purchase measurable. So that really is the key to this. We're able to now create a currency to measure and not always rely on what they say they're going to do, but actually rely on what they actually do. So in summary, 
We're going to have a discussion in a minute, answer questions. You can understand the success of social media ads by measuring the behavior of the whole consumer journey through the complete sales funnel on e-commerce point of sale. It's a natural setting. They can be in the park, on their couch, watching TV, uh, anywhere on their cell phone, tablet, or on the desktop. They can also know which ads deliver the most attention, interest, and actual sales at the e-commerce point of sale measurably. And know which ads and which platforms deliver the best ROI, which is really the bottom line. I want to thank everybody very much. My email is here. Anyone who is interested in getting the case study would like to learn more, uh, get more information. Happy to talk to you. And we'll go to questions right now. Yeah. Someone was asking right. about, I think you mentioned this about using panels, but can people, can they conduct these studies if they use their own survey and their own panel? Of course, yes. And as you know, eight of the top 10 market research companies are using it exactly that way where we actually send them, we, it's a very s simple survey integration link that integrates into their survey. Uh, they can use their panel. We have some that uh, use their own survey and we get the panel, but yes, you can, it's a really simple leak. And, and I think I mentioned it, but we also have a self-serve product where you can actually create your own links, integrate it into your survey and your panel uh, or any panel company you want to use. And you can create them very quickly and when you're done fielding, you get your results immediately. Sure. This might be one of those it depends answers, <laughs> but um, had a question about the usual sample size for ad testing. This sample size for ad testing yeah. for, social, for on social media. You know, we, we see a wide variety and you, you, as far as it depends, a lot depends on who's doing the test. Uh, typically we're seeing anywhere from the low of 75 to 150 is pretty average. We do have some people that uh, will test two, three, sometimes 400, but um, I would anywhere from 100 to 150 is probably a good place to be. Sure. Then also another question too, which I've always kind of wondered about, do you need to, or how do you get permission from the e-commerce platforms to integrate, you know, into their site and monitor the activity on them? Well, most of them, in fact, almost all of them work with, work with us. Sure. You know, they're doing, they're doing the same studies. And uh, it's not an issue at all because they typically want to know, they want to test advertisers to show that their platform works better than other platforms. So it's a, we, we don't really have an issue with that. Sure. Good question. Oh, yeah. Well, I think you might have touched this on this one too, just talking about in, with the insurance example, but uh, have you done any similar research with B2B purchase journeys? Or you know, using other sites or looking at like LinkedIn or something like that, seeing ads there. Oh, that's very yeah. I must have gone too quick on that page, but we we actually do LinkedIn. Okay. Um, and yeah, we do LinkedIn. Um, and the the new um, platforms that we add are really based on need. Um, we get a lot of requests, uh, quite a lot of requests for one offs, but we typically are looking for um, just for the bandwidth and the, the volume that we're doing, we need to be focusing on the ones where people are going to be using them regularly. Right. Because there, there's a lot of work involved in building this. But LinkedIn has become, uh, it's good, I'm glad you brought that up. LinkedIn is, uh, from a B2B, is probably one of the biggest ones. Sure. And then, as I mentioned also, that we have we 60 other, um, you know, um, URLs. You know, I mentioned uh, ESPN, um, you know, MSN, Yahoo. Uh, clients who want to test on those regularly, whether it's theirs or uh, a certain you know, company that wants to test based on their requests, we will build, in most cases, we can build them out. And sure. I also mentioned uh, the different e-commerce ones too. That's growing pretty quickly. I, I used Amazon because it's, you know, Amazon does more e-commerce <laughs> right. than the next right. 49 combined. Right. Who doesn't know Amazon? Yeah. Right. Who doesn't use Amazon? Right. Especially the last two years. Oh, yeah. Then there's another question here just about, I think, um, people wondering, like, if they have a new product, they want to know what, what people type in the search bar, but, you know, want, want to be, I guess, maybe place them near certain competitors. So are those, is that the kind of thing you can do in terms of, like you were saying, placing the ad in space on the on the page that they're looking at? 
Sure. Good, good, real good question. Yeah, we can control the environment. Um, most people want the natural environment, but there are quite a few people who want to make sure, how do I perform next to this competitor? And that can be done um, both on social media and on, you know, when e-commerce, when they hit the uh, type of category and hit the search results page, we can set up who's next to them. Yeah, and that's, you want to know how you compete with your competitors. Right, exactly. And new products too, we have a lot of companies, especially in e-commerce, there used to be a lot of single products. Now there's a lot of packaging being done where you're buying multiple. And in some cases, uh, it's, it's really hard to know what they're going to type in to look for it. So um, you, know, you can usually do a test on what they search for, and then we can control what comes up when they hit the search. Right. Oh, totally. Well, I think we've and gotten to... It's a fun sandbox. Oh, yeah, exactly. Always changing. That's it. I think yeah. we've gotten to all the questions here. So um, let's say, Perfect. you know, thank you, Jeff. And then thanks, most importantly, everybody out there for taking time to be with us here today. We really appreciate it. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Have a great day.